Yes, guys, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal podcast. My name is Kosi, and this is your match or preview. Mikel Arteta's press conference. Arsenal will be visiting the Villa Park. The first game, it was 3-1 in favor of Aston Villa at the Emirates Stadium. The second game comes after we lost to Wolves two goals to one in a game that had so many talking points. And Mikel Arteta has been talking about those things that happened against Wolves and what could actually happen against the Aston Villa. He's been talking about Runason and how he could be the main goalkeeper in that game. That was really, really, really disturbing when he was talking about it. He talked that, you know, about Pepe becoming a threat um, in the past two or three games he played uh, for us, you know, and so many other things. So smash the like button, subscribe if you're new to join the family, and give me your comments about what you think about this game, Aston Villa? You know, after losing to Wolves, it looks like a game that we are going to automatically, automatically drop points um, in. But, you know, you never know. Mikel Ateta says the players are ready. They are very, very confident. Of course, he did talk about the match officiation against Wolves. And he said, these, you know, these are things that happen when you do not have control over them. And we are going to see much of that in his own words from the Arsenal website. guys so let us get the party started Mikel Arteta was talking on zoom to journalists today and that has been already transcribed down on the Arsenal website by Rob Kelly um of course uh Kelly says Mikel Arteta was back on zoom on Thursday as he faced the media ahead of our Premier League clash against Aston Villa our manager discussed our performance at Wolves David, uh, David Lewis red card Nicolas Pepe's form Matt Tryon and more this is what he told the media we start off on how tough it was to put the wolves defeat behind us and he says i don't know how hard it is for everybody but we have to move on we have a big game on saturday and we, and we need to go again there are things we learn from the game things that we cannot control obviously and a lot of positives to take away so we must move on go for the next one and keep the momentum going yeah and i, and I pretty much understand him and i pretty much um do agree with them you know you've got to put the you know the past behind you it was a you know it, it was a funny moment uh, but every club has a funny moment clubs like liverpool i think have had more funny moments with var and, and, and match officiation uh, like we are but you know that doesn't put your morale down you've got to keep going you've got to you know you look on to the next game and of course um it, it's it's pretty bad that we have to play aston villa again you know after wolves because it's not a game that's really that, that really gives you a lot of confidence but again uh, you know on the other side it's something good it's a game that it's a game where you're going to compete you know it's it's it's, it's a clash where you really 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 need to compete and i think it's something good michael says he doesn't know how everybody is you know is gonna survive this but what he knows and um what he is sure about is we've got to keep the momentum going we've got to keep on you know it's one loss in seven you know in, in seven matches in the league you can't just throw that away because you lost the game can you um so we've got to keep going and and and, and i just pray the players are not this frustrated as you know if we can win the next game then everything is going to be uh really 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 behind us um on bukayo saka's impact uh on his return um, Mikel Arteta said, I think it was the team collectively, the way we played, the goals we should have scored, the dominance we showed, and we need to keep going with, um, with 10 and 9 men after watching the game back, the fight, the resilience of the team, the passion with which they played is incredible. The praise um, is there because we still have chances, we still had chances to score a goal. Even with nine men, and that is um, even with nine men, and that is completely down to them. How much they want to fight, and the spirit they have around them. And you know, this is th this is uh, something that's you know I didn't talk about in in the match reaction, but it was very very crucial. You know. We had a chance when we were nine men. I think Pierre Merkel um, I think his shot was blocked by. Well, I don't remember that defender, but that shot that was blocked. You know, we could have made it two two. You know, it should have. It, it could have gone two all. Uh, you know, we were nine men. You know, we were two men down. There's a lot of you know resilience. 
you know, the fight, the spirit was so incredible. And of course, Mikalata says, you know, it was all about the players, the way they played together, the collective effort. And I'm going to say it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't an individual effort. Yasaka was good, but that ball was from, you know, f w the first ball he got was from Thomas Pate. The second ball he got fr was from um, Alexander Lacazette, cross whipped in from, you know, from Pepe. So, uh, you know, you, you just look at it and you're like, you know, um, I think the glue, the chemistry uh, really does exist in this Arsenal squad. Uh, on, Aston's, on Aston Villa's defeat to West Ham, he said, I'm not the judge. I'm not here to judge their performance. They have been fantastic throughout the season. They have, been, um, they have beaten some top teams. They have been on a really strong run, and they, um, and they beat us when, uh, they play, when we played them at home. So we have to make sure that we go there and win the game. Yeah, that's, th that should be the mentality. Yeah, that should be the mentality. They beat us. Time for revenge. You know, I, I thought it was time for revenge f uh, against Wolves, and, and, and really it was, you know, and, uh, until Craig Paulson, you know, starts playing the drama. But again, again, again against Aston Villa, these are two clubs, you know, we are playing back to back, and we lost against, you know, ag against them in the first half or, you know, of the season. We lost against Wolves, at the Emirates Stadium, and we lost against Aston Villa at the Emirates Stadium again. So, you know, it's, it, these are two games we should have won. I, 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 as against Wolves, the right mentality, the right lineup, the right, the, the right way to start a game. Against Aston Villa, the right mentality. You've got to go out there seeking for revenge. Um, on the appeal of David Lewis' red card, he did say, I'm very hopeful. That's why we put the appeal in because we went through all the images and we think that the red card should be overruled. Uh, that is why we put in the appeal. Um, on when the outcome will be revealed, he said, I don't know how long it will take, but hopefully today we will have more information. That is the list I have from the club. And of course, I think um, we have discussed this before, guys. That, that red card, it shouldn't be standing. I, I, look, it shouldn't be standing. Among all the red cards, among all the decisions that were made on that evening, that night, that red card was just so stupid. At least the penalty, you know, you, you, you could argue in, in, in favor of the referee. That was a clear goal scoring opportunity. Um, even Wind could have scored that goal. So probably, you know, you could argue about the red card. You know, th there is no way it, it must not be over, you know, overruled. Um, on Matt Ryan's fitness, he said ha uh, he has not been available in training yet. And he is, um, and Alex is available. So we will have a choice between them, um, between the two of them for the weekend. If it is Matt, if, if Matt is able to train, um, uh, and they are both fit, we will have a decision to make. If Matt is not fit, obviously Alex will be um, in goal. So Alexander Runa recently, Runison um, has higher chances uh, as the goalkeeper on, you know, over the weekend. Nobody trusts him. Trust me, I do not trust him, and I, don't f I do not actually feel secure um, when he is going to start for Arsenal. On Abame Yang being available, he said, well, he is available. Um, he played a few minutes after 10 days of not doing much, and hopefully in the, t uh, in the next two days, he feels good, and he is available to contribute to the team. Uh, on the key to Pepe's form, I think this was asked by... This was, this was asked by the go by, by gold.com um, and, 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 and he says even when we made decisions not to play him uh, he kept working hard he, he, you know he has improved um, in a lot of areas and he's much much more consistent for 90 minutes uh, he is a threat at the moment because he's been scoring goals and he's been assisting players so he, he, um, he's been a real threat he needs to continue doing that yeah I mean you know, look, I, I still remember one, I'm, I'm one of those people who had thought, who had, who have, you know, who had given up on, on, on Pepe. But the last three games, I think he has been something. Yeah, he's been something. If, you know, if he can continue, the, you know, consistency really matters. And, you know, we, we, we just see this with players like Emily, Emily Smith, Ruan, Saka. Three good games, four good games, you get the confidence. Five good games, six good games, you get the momentum. The nine good games, ar around ten good games, you know, you're a starter, and as long as a player becomes that regular starter, the results are going to come. And I think Pepe is doing that, um, and he's so lucky that Gabriel Martinelli is down. I think uh, he's just a little bit lucky. You know, Martinelli is not himself these days. He, he's not actually, you know, performing like he, you know, he, he was performing last year, um, you know, at the beginning of last year. And I think that's one of the reasons as, uh, as why Pepe is starting, and he's really actually capitalizing on the chances. Um, you know, I have no problem with that. On concussion substitutions, I said we've got a meeting in the afternoon in the Premier League uh, to, uh, to have much more 
uh, information and clarity about how we can use them and the rules behind them. Uh, I think it's necessary and, uh, and opens another possibility when something dramatic happens on the pitch, at least we have the ability to replace that player. So we, we, we shall hear more from the Premier League on concussion substitutes, um, you know, very, very soon this afternoon on whether David Lewis would have been better off bringing down William Jose. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, the, you know, the rules are really funny. The rules are really funny because they state that if, 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 if Lewis had put down William Jose, it would have been a yellow card. Yeah. Would have been a yellow card, you know. So, and 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 and, and this is why he's been asked this question that would have, you know, would Lewis have, have been better if he if he actually tackled William Jose, uh, you know, from a goal scoring position? He said, um, "We know the law. For me, it's not about the decision and what happens um, in that instant. Um, that's very similar. That there was a very similar instant, even though David um, is behind him against Manchester United. It was on the side of the player, and that completely changes the angle and the purpose and how much it affects the player's ability to finish the action. But still, it's a similar situation. I think they will look into it. And I, I, look, I think Bicalatet, you know." Here he lies. The truth is, if if Dave Louis had tackled, um, uh, had tackled William Jose before he lets him run across, you know, across him, because William Jose, you know, William Jose gets this ball, and then Dave Louis waits a second, then the player crosses, you know, moves across him. That is where you know contact is made, or contact is perceived to have, you know, to have been made. If he had tackled him before William Jose being in front of him, he could have got a yellow card. It would have been a yellow card and a penalty, obviously. But it, you know, it would. I don't think it would have cost us a game. I think, you know, when when, when Wolves go back into the, the, the you know into the second half, they're a different Wolves. They have a different mentality, and you just saw how you know they were different. They knew they were playing ten men. Th they just knew it. And then Leno, Le Leno, of course, uh, fucks up, you know, everything. Uh, on whether there is a concern about David Lewis in these situations, he says, "When you look at the two images, we can we can have a long, long debate here. Uh, it's just a point, or oh, um, it's just to point the finger. Um, you know, a Devi, in my opinion, is not fair. Uh, on whether Pepe could be dropped in favor of Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, he said, at the end of the day, we have to play the players who are who are in the best form, and everybody has to earn the right to play and to participate in the games." That's what everybody is doing, pushing each other to raise the level. You can see that um, the level has been raised because everybody is playing at their best. There is still room for improvement, so everybody has to keep uh, pushing. Well, I don't think Pierre Merkabameyang will come in for Pepe. I think um, at one point in time, Pepe might become one player who is really, really, really undroppable at Arsenal. I think it might be Alexander Lacazette, yeah? I think it might be Lacazette dropping uh, for Pierre Merkabameyang. On whether the first six, uh, the first forty-six minutes against Wolves was our best football in this season, look. Okay, he says maybe yes. I think for long periods we looked very close to what we want as a team. Then we have to get uh, that into results. We um, when you have those moments in the game, you have to go three or four nil up, um, and the game is over. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. I I agree with you, Mikael, and I, I think. This is why we didn't win this game. You have four chances. You have five chances. Ta you know, put them to bed. Like, like, put them to bed. You know, close the game. We have so many games. Think about the next game. But we score one. We sit back. We wait for half time. Like, we are, like, you know, like, we are winning the league. It, it, it didn't make much sense. But I might also agree. I think that was really good football in the first 40, 46 minutes. Really good football. I, I can only compare it to... That match, we played West Brom, Fulham, and, and, and Manchester United this season. I, I think, but, you know, it was really good football. And again, of course, against a club like w Wolves, it was really, really good football. Uh, on whether his team is starting to, re uh, to resemble his long-term vision, um, he says, yes, uh, the first transfer window was very rushed. It was a very rushed one because I had just arrived. The other two, uh, we had... Uh, we had um, the, uh, the other two, we had a little more time. If you see the amount of transactions we've done in this window, it's incredible. Credit to the club. Credit to Edu for the work um, that he's done because it's not easy to get amount of things uh, that we've done in one window. I know, for mo um, I know that most of them uh, was to get some players out and create some space around the team, but it's still not e an easy thing to do in this window or this 
market. I'm not going to talk about the transfer window. I've had enough. Um, he does speak on um, on if it would be gutting for Matt um, Ryan to miss out. He says, this is football and things happen. That's why we allowed Matt Massey to go. We knew, uh, uh, we knew that we had to get somebody else because we knew things um, can happen. Unfortunately, when you at least need them, it's, um, it actually happens. So we are more protected now. Having Matt is well in the squad, as well in the squad. And let's see if he's fit. But for now, Alex is fit as well. Uh, on whether he's worried about the team's discipline after two more red cards and... Um, you know, here he said, well, um, when I was worried about this plane, it was on two occasions with Nico and Granite. Um, we had, we should avoid and we, are, and, and we have talked about it. Uh, but there are other ones that, but the other, but there are other ones that are moments in the game where uh, in a split of a second, you have to make a decision and then a referee has to make a decision as well. There is much less control uh, on, um, on our side there. Uh, what is clear is that when you have five red cards in this period, you're going to lose a lot of points. If we, um, if we have some, if we have some of those points, we'd be in a completely different uh, position in the table. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, there are no teams with, um, there are no teams with five red cards up there at the top. It doesn't really happen. Um, on how he feels about the online abuse of players and how he reacts to them. It says there are all types of different uh, abuses, and I think it has it, it has to be er 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 eradicated completely. I think social media has a big responsibility on that because then you talk about the mental health of the players, and the public has be ha ha and the public and how exposed they are. I am all open, and I'm I'm, I'm and I'm for people to have their opinions, but not just to be insulting people, abusing people, and using a screen. Um, on somebody's mobile phone to tell them wherever you want to be um, a person that you do not even to a person that you do not even know. Um, for me, for me, for that, he says that for me has to be eradicated because it's causing a lot of damage in football and a lot of damage in the public people um, to public people. So I think we have to be really strong uh, on that, and I think you guys, the media. As well, have a big part to play to support us um, and the industry. Um, on whether, or, or, of course, what, what can I say about that? About, about the abuse of players and and, and and the reactions is, you know, I think this is a very different age, and football has to embrace it. Um, everyone has a smartphone. Everybody, you know, has you know, you know, fans, football fans. Whether you have a f smartphone or a computer, it doesn't take away that you're a football fan. You, you you're gonna be scraped person uh when he fucks up again you're gonna you know abuse pepe when he gets a stupid red card um and and, and it's purely not intentional it's, it's it's because you know your emotions have been overworked you know by decisions players do make do make and you know referees do make but i think he, you know he has a point um at times the cyber bullying goes you know way beyond and um, and you feel you know that was too much wasn't it um on whether it would be strange to ask alex to start given he's been uh, removed from the europa league squad he says no alex knew his role before we signed him and obviously uh, he knows his role after we signed him we have uh, we had we had a plan on the goalkeeper position and we could not execute the plan in the way we wanted for different reasons but alex's role was very clear around the squad uh, that hasn't changed then he needs to earn his opportunity and he needs to earn his place. He is third. He is third. He said he is third, second of us, depending on his performance. Uh, he needs to push for that. On whether he's having to manage, on whether he's having to manage uh, Kian Tierney carefully, he says no. It's a diff, uh, it's a different injury in this case. Kian is a player that really pushes himself, and he has to, um, and he has to be able to perform physically at his best because he cannot help himself. Even in training, he can't help himself. Uh, we are trying to manage him in a, in the best possible way and find everything possible to give him the best chance to be fit as soon as possible. And we are here to support him as much as we can. On whether he's concerned that Kian Tierney will be playing games for Scotland soon, I said no. What I what I want is, um, is that he's fit to play for us as soon as possible. Then, if he's fit and he's ready to represent his country, there we go. It's uh, it's one of his dreams, and he needs to fulfill that. But I want he I want but what I want is for him to play for Arsenal. 
on whether he wanted to sign a left back in the January transfer window. Um, he did say we cannot do everything. As I mentioned before, there, there are so many things that we had to do in this, in this transfer window and we had to focus on the priorities for that. We almost did everything we wanted to do, um, to do and there um, are things to do. But when you talk about uh, the squad evolution, it's going to take time and a big effort. Um, things, have to, things have to happen your way um, as well as that's not the case. Uh, and say, it says things have to happen your way as well, and that's not the case all the time. All right. Um, on whether people have been too critical on Alexander Rune Runeson, um, in the last game, I think he was he was he was a savior, wasn't he? Um, he says yes, but this is what you face when you play uh, for a big club. People expect you to go out there and give um, your best and perform at the top level, and if you don't. You're going to get that criticism. You know that. Uh, uh, um, you know that. You know that before you join. You know that before you join the club, uh, that you will be exposed to critics all the time. And if you do you really well, people will be praising you more than any other club. If you want to play here, you have to be able to handle that pressure. Um, and whether Runason has experienced a cultural shock, he says, I don't think so. I think uh, he knew. And he ex he expected that, and he needs to handle that. We are here to support him, uh, Ateta. And he's played so many games already here. So uh, he's played some good games, and he and, and yes, uh, he had a difficult game against Manchester City. But the other night came. Uh, but the uh, the other night he came, and I think he really did well. On whether he has, on whether he has the character to cope with the pressure. Um, that's of course, Runasan. He says, yeah, um, he works really hard and he's fitting in really 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 well around the dressing room he says he's a really nice boy really humble and he needs to be away from all the comments uh to focus on his work and improving on whether vr has changed the way he coaches and advises his players um, and he says there are some things that we need to be more careful with uh, for example with the handball rule around the penalty area that's for sure with um with the way you have to stop the crosses and block crosses uh, it has been it has an effect and you have to train it so uh, that's uh, Mikel Arteta's press conference down there um, speaking to journalists um, be ahead of the Aston Villa uh, clash so many things he did talk about yeah to so many things you know he talked about I think you know it, 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 unlike the Wolves one this one was not centered on transfers basically centered on Alexander Runeson and um, the fact that we do not ha actually have a decent goalkeeper um, against Aston Villa. And I I I'll come with a match preview, predicted lineup, tactical analysis on how to beat Aston Villa, and the team news who is available and who is not available. Thank you so much. Smash a like in this video, and I'll speak to you in the next one.